So, delighted to welcome back into the fold, Stephen Kirby, uh, rejoining Somerset County Cricket Club. Good to be back. Oh, amazing, Spence. Honestly, I could not be happier. Um, obviously, I'm hugely going to miss all the Derby boys because I've worked for so long with quite, you know, quite a few of them down there. Up there, I should say. Um, and yeah, they, and I'm just wishing them all the best for the summer coming up. Um, strange, you know, when you've been working with somebody for so long or a group of bowlers for so long, and then you just see them start to come into the first team. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a mixed emotions from that perspective. But obviously, being back here, it's just fantastic. Uh, been made to feel so welcome. Um, yeah, the banter's flying. The, they're getting stuck into a few nicknames already, which is great. Um, but I've just been so impressed with the attitude of everybody really. I'd actually forgotten how, what the culture, not forgotten, but not um, really understood what it was like, the culture, until you come back and experience it again. Um, everybody just wants to be better than they were the day before. And it's just an amazing place to be. Um, obviously, brilliantly led by apes. Um, quite ironic really, I had the, the interview and having helped Abe's in the academy and then he came onto the staff and then Craig Overton as well. They were the ones that interviewed me ironically so I didn't actually know where to put myself. It was quite a weird um, surreal moment but yeah just so happy to be here really Spencer. It's amazing. We're here to talk about your, your, your life in cricket. How, how did you get involved in, in this sport? What like cricket not, not football or rugby or hockey or tennis or anything like that? Well I was never big enough for rugby. <laughs> And I had two left feet in football. <laughs> um, no, but I, cricket has always been part of the family, really. Um, we used to live, uh, obviously, in Haywood. Um, Haywood Cricket Club is a big, big, huge part of my life, and still is. Um, and I would, used to live at the top of the road, and we used, used to go down. And, and since I can never remember, really, Haywood Cricket Club was always the place that we'd go to as a family. Um, played my first game when I was seven. Um, I know, I, I've been used to playing tip and run um, and obviously you know my batting skills were excellent as you know as they progressed um, but I remember the first game of under 13s played tip and run literally hit the ball threw the bat in the air and started running off um, and uh, had to go back pick my bat up and what have you so that's quite an embarrassing little moment when I first started but um, I was quite lucky at Haywood we had uh, Curtly Ambrose as a pro uh, when I was about 10, 10 or 11, and I just watched him bowl and I just thought, wow, I just want to be, want to bowl like him, really. Um, and we were quite lucky in the Central Lancashire League then, we had some amazing pros. Um, and, you know, Hansi Kronje, Gus Logie, Carl Hooper, um, you know, just names I'm being reamed off there, but they were just like cricket superstars. And so, yeah, Haywood Cricket Club um, was where it all started for me, really. So how does a Lancastrian end up at Yorkshire? Yeah, took some <laughs> stick for that. <laughs> um, well actually, uh, when I was about so, 16, 17, I uh, got scouted by uh, Russell Cobb, Josh Cobb's dad, who is still now a very, very, very close friend. And he came down to watch a batter, actually. Came up to watch a batter, I should say. And I got the batter out in an interleague game. And then I got... Uh, came down to trial at 16, 17 years old for Leicestershire. Uh, played at a game up at Durham, um, and I remember bowling, bowling okay. And I was on a 25 pound a week uh, YTS ski, and uh, and then got signed as a contract at Leicester. Um, had a career-threatening back injury very, very early on in my career. And excuse me, Jack Birkenshaw was amazing um, it helped me sort of rebuild my action but then they ended up releasing me which i thought my world had ended at that point and you know you think oh you have this dream of being a professional cricketer but i actually weren't strong enough or fit enough um, mentally or physically to be a pro at that time so actually ironically it was the best thing that ever happened to me and then i went to south floors for a wonderful company called west coast flooring who a great bloke called carl nickel a friend of the family uh, he is family um, and then I was obviously running out of holiday and then the second team games I was trying to trial everywhere while I was trying to sell floors but I was running out of holiday and I played a couple of games for Yorkshire in the second, done well and then um, Steve Oldham rang up and uh, he said uh, we want you to play tomorrow lad and I said oh so I can't play for another second team game because I've got no holiday left 
Well, he said, that's a shame. He says, uh, it's the first team game <laughs> against, against Kent. And I thought, hold on a minute, the game. I, I said, the first team game, I almost dropped the phone for a start. I said, give me two minutes. <laughs> went, went to speak to the boss, Carl. And uh, I remember going in very, very sort of tentatively uh, to say, you know, Carl, can I have some more time off? And he's like, no, you've got to make a, a decision now. It's either selling floors or cricket, that's it. And I was like, and I said, but it's the first team. We, we've got to play, you know, Yorkshire playing Kent. And he just went quiet for a minute. And he went, right. He said, I'll, I'll drive you up there myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I ended up playing a, um, my debut for Yorkshire against Kent, which was weird because it was day two of a four day game. And, uh, and Matthew Hoggard, who I replaced at the time, I know it happens a lot now where the international call ups get called up and you can replace people, but that was very rare then. So he'd been called up to play for England against Pakistan and I, I sort of was his replacement. And I never looked back since. No. It was uh, wonderful. I, one of the most amazing moments of my life, actually, because you know, I've watched all these lads, they were my heroes on the TV. You know, you, you Goff, your Sidebottom, your Silverwoods, your Craig Whites, Darren Neiman, you know, Michael Vaughan and so on. And then to be in the dressing room with them was, was really, really special. And they made me feel really welcome. You, you reeled off some of the names there. It, it, was, a, it was a great Yorkshire side and you, know, you, you, you tasted success with them. Um, and then you ended up uh, at, at Gloucestershire. How did, how did that happen? Uh, it was a, well I'd, I'd played sort of three or four years at Yorkshire by that stage, I'd signed a big contract um, and I wanted to, I kept getting pigeonholed as sort of a, a red ball, sort of championship bowler and I wanted to get better in white ball cricket. I'd had a bit of a fallout with Dave Bias, who I've, we've made up now since, <laughs> um, who I, I do actually respect a lot, but at the time I didn't understand why my life was being made to feel quite bad at the time. Uh, lots of personal issues going on, family. Uh, my wife's dad wasn't very well, etc. Passed away, and there were some really difficult moments then. And I, silly, sillyly, um, uh, left the club really. But then I, it was a difficult decision to make at the time. And with hindsight, would I, could I have done it? Should I have done it? I'm glad I did in the end because I went to move to Gloucestershire, where, you know. They'd won uh, nine trophies in six years, and ironically never won another one since I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that, that's not the case. Um, but no, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I learned a lot at Gloucestershire. I learned a lot about to, to be a pro, a real professional, in particular from John Lewis, um, Bracewell, John Bracewell, um, and all the coaches. Mark Elaine was fantastic. I'm so glad he's been. Um, you know, got back up there onto the coaching staff because he's a wonderful, wonderful coach. Tactically, one of the most astute coaches I'd ever worked with, actually. Um, so I'm really pleased that they've been able to bring him back. Um, but yeah, I love my time at Gloucester. I really did. Um, some good stories up there as well. <laughs> now, as, as a Lancastrian who's, who's had success at, at Yorkshire, <laughs> then as a, a Gloucester hero moving to Somerset, how, how did that feel? Well, a traitor, it sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> on both sides. Um, I know it sounds like I've, I've jumped ship on every, on every place I've been. That's not the case. Um, I, it was a difficult time to leave Gloucester. I'd had seven, eight years, and I'd been offered a benefit year in 2009. And I kept thinking to myself, I wanted to play first division cricket, and I also really desperately wanted to play for England. And I never wanted any regrets at the end of my career, ever. I never wanted to look back at the end of my career and go, well, you should have done this, I should have done that. And, and I'm so glad that I made the decision to move to Somerset because we played first division cricket, we went to the Champions League in India, we played in four finals, I think it was. Um, yes, I, I turned down a benefit year, which I was so grateful that, uh, that Gloucester gave me, but you know, I had, to, I had to make that decision. Tough one, but very glad I did because I've had no regrets at the end of my career. I gave it absolutely everything to play for my country um, and met some amazing people. And wow, <laughs> I'm here now. Um, who'd have thought it as a coach? It's um, again quite, you know, quite surreal, really. What's what is that rivalry like between Somerset and Gloucester? Maybe for those who don't know, obviously, as supporters and behind the scenes and sat in the stands, you know, we know what it's like a little bit, but we probably don't know what it's like out in the middle. What, what's it like? 
running into bowl. Tasty. For Somerset at Gloucestershire. Tasty. Um, I mean, some of some of the most uh, best, well-supported games I've ever played cricket in front of. Gloucestershire and Somerset fans are so passionate about the game. Um, so you can imagine full houses in T20 games. And there were one particular. Well, firstly, can I just say, um, Marcus Jeskovic. Not only it was a real privilege to play cricket against him, uh, not very nice at times, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but a privilege then to play with him. And then, hopefully, and then obviously to be able to come here as a coach and work with him for all of about four weeks. He thought, play with him for four years, I'm going to get rid of this lad, I've, I've had enough. Um, so I'm really sorry to all the Somerset supporters that I got rid of Tres because he couldn't, he couldn't coach with me anymore. Um, no, but I'm very, very... Um, I felt very privileged to have to bowl at somebody of that calibre and there were one game in particular, well several games, I got the better of him with a slow ball and I used to have a bit of a, um, a signal where, you know, I can't really show it on camera but I'd scratch a certain part of my body to the keeper and he would uh, he'd come up um, a little bit further up and I bowl a slow ball and, uh, and I got Trez out a couple of times. Anyway, this one particular time they worked out what my signal was, so I'm now here at Taunton and he smacked me absolutely everywhere. He got 118 about 100 balls. I think he hit me into the Morrison's car park at will, right? And every time I bowled this slow ball, I couldn't understand why he kept whacking me and obviously he picked it. So I, I, and at the end, I said to John Lewis at, at mid-off, I said, mate, I don't know what to bowl at this bloke. He went, bowl under arm. <laughs> it's probably gonna be better. Anyway, he played brilliantly. But then there was a, uh, a return fixture back at Gloucestershire and um, I now knew that he got my signal for this slow ball. So I stood at the end of my mark, scratching, da 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 da, jumping up and down pretty much, you know, I'm going to bowl the slow ball type of thing. And uh, he came charging down the wicket at me and I yorked him, <laughs> give me that one, and I'm <laughs> giving it this one. And I've never, ever, ever reminded him of it. <laughs> Not at least 30 times. In fact, the coaching group's got uh, a picture of me giving it this one. I've got it really blown up on uh, a big picture at home. Um, he was a fantastic play player to bowl at um, because you had to be right on your money. He did, he did your best ball for one, but he'd also, if you strayed on line or length, he capitalised big time. And we all know what a good cricketer he was, but I don't think people quite realise how good a person he is as well. I mean, every single person here in this team um, will have a story about Trez and how he's helped them. And I think also, as well, a big testament to him is what he did uh, to help people with mental health, uh, mental issues, uh, coming through the game, depression and what have you. He was the first one to break that stigma. And, I, you know, well done to him for that. Um, because I think he pioneered the way forward for, for people there. So, yeah, England have got a belter. Um, we've obviously messed... We're, we're, we're going to miss him, um, but we are going to miss him because he's still around um, all the time. He's still here slinging at the lads. And, um, but yeah, he'll loan his skills and, and come back, and hopefully, uh, we'll be the better for it. There isn't helping, helping people there. I know that when you were a player, you felt it was important to get involved in the, in the community side of things. Yes, and, and you know, you, you helped me on a number of projects and things like that. Mm. How important is, it, is that sort of thing to, to the modern day player? Do you think? I think it's fantastic. I mean, in particular, the stuff you, you've done there, uh, Spence, and the club have done there, uh, should be really, really uh, shouted from the rooftops because it's wonderful. And I think for a cricketer, it helps you keep grounded as well. Um, I think it's important that you share. I think we're role models, not just as you know players and what have you. And I think you should be able to go out there and, and help where you can. And I think you know, even given where we are now with this very, very difficult last 18 months probably even more so, you know, go and, get out, go and help out with the food bank somewhere, go and help out, uh, you know, with people who are not quite as fortunate as yourself, I think it just makes you feel better, I, I don't know if you call it unconditional acts of kindness or what, I don't know, but it just, I think, uh, you know, maybe the, uh, the cricket gods will look on you and you'll do a little bit better for doing that as well, so, but I, I just think it's summer, and I think Somerset do it really, really well. And just finally, how excited are you about the, the crop of young bowlers that, that you're working with? We've, yeah. seen, we've seen a bit of it. We know how good the Somerset attack is. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen that over the last few years. 
and in the last few weeks we've got to see some of these younger guys that are, that are coming through. How excited should Somerset members and supporters be about, about some of the guys that you're working with? Definitely, Spence. I mean, I've been quite blown away actually. I knew, I knew before how good the academy was, because obviously I'd experienced it. Jason set a brilliant legacy there before he obviously moved into the senior coaching side of things. And actually quite a lot of the lads are now coming through, aren't they, uh, as fruits of that. But I think just watching somebody like Sonny Baker come in and not look out of place in any way, shape or form, his attitude, um, the way that he goes about his business, not just how he bowled, but I've not seen a young player with that level of professionalism and attention to detail in his prep and in his physical fitness and his training and his attitude to the game was excellent and I think a big accolade should go to Andy Griffiths for the time and the effort that they've put in through the academy and he has with him. Obviously all the accolades should really go to Summy because he's the one that's put the hard work in but you know we've got some great coaches here and I think when you look at some of the young players that are coming through have not even made the academy yet and um, the future looks fantastic and you know I've not mentioned Casey, Casey Orridge, a very impressive young man uh, with a lot of pace um, you know bless him he, he broke his foot in pre-season um, but he'll come back stronger for that I thought the way Ned Leonard has gone about his business has been superb um, again another fantastic kid um, that's got a big future so yeah, absolutely, and, and like my job here is to help, I mean normally when I was at Derby I'd be helping out with the elite bowling groups and helping out through the pathway. The pathway structure here is absolutely amazing, you know, which Sarge and Jason, the club have put together through Snelly. Um, so yeah, obviously I'll support and help where I can there. Um, and yeah, I think the future, I think the future looks very, very good on the bowling side of things and I think the supporters and uh, going to start to see that even more this year.